So, one, increase prices. Second thing to do, number two, is decrease your direct costs. Deal that says uh, profit is the difference between what you pay for something and what you sell for it. That's all there is. So if you want to increase your profit, there's only two things that you can do. Put up your prices, decrease your direct costs. It's as simple as that. And what you need to do is you need to just go through your cost base, look at every cost that you pay. You need to go back to those people and you need to ask them quite simply, is that the best price you can do? And you'll find that in nine times out of 10, people will be able to lower their prices for you. And if that's what they wish to do, if that's their business model, you let them do it. But you need to be really tough and really tight on, on, on your direct costs. So one, put up your prices. Two, decrease your direct costs. Three, sort your underperformers. Okay, this is all about fixing that financial model. You have underperforming clients. You have clients who don't understand the value they can get from you. They don't get what you do. They don't understand you need to try and educate them, and if you can't educate them in a way that's effective, you need to sack them. You have underperforming products. You have products and services that just don't deliver, that just don't work. If you have underperforming products and services, what you need to do is you need to try and sort them out, and if you can't sort them out, you sack them. You have underperforming suppliers. Suppliers who just, and you know who those suppliers are, and you've asked them a dozen times, but they won't give you the service, they won't give you the product that you want. You need to try and educate them. If you do not supply to me in the way that I want, we're going to go to somewhere else. If they don't do that, then you need to sack them. And finally, you have underperforming staff. And there's no pretty way about this one. If you have underperforming staff, you try and educate them. If you can't educate them, you sack them. And the interesting thing about all these things is this is all your fault. It's no one else's fault. You get the staff you deserve because you employed them and you trained them up. And if they behave in a certain way, it's good. you get the clients you deserve because of how you buy and how you sell. So there's a real piece about why would you have underperforming clients, products, suppliers, or staff? It's all about how you've managed it. And, and the whole piece is about you taking control rather than letting other people take control. So one, put up prices. Two, decrease direct costs. Three, sort your underperformers. When you've done that, then you've sorted out your financial model. And it's at that stage that you can actually say, okay, now we've got a business which can actually make some money, now we move on to actually doing the marketing piece. You shouldn't do the marketing piece until you've done that. You shouldn't be doing marketing until you know you've got a demand. You shouldn't be doing marketing until you know you've got customers who want to buy your product, and you certainly shouldn't be making product until you know that people will actually buy it. So, one, put up prices, two, decrease direct cost, three, sort your underperformers. And to my mind, if you want to put some numbers next to it, put your prices up by 5%. Decrease your direct costs by 5%. Sort your underperforming clients. Sack 5% of your customers. Get rid of 5% of the product. Get rid of 5% of your suppliers. And probably get rid of 5% of your staff. And you'll find that the, the combination of those three 5% turns the business from really struggling to actually having some kind of energy level where it can actually be a proper business which actually makes money, which is something you're proud of, which is something that's worth having people work in. And only at that stage do you go out to the marketing, which is the number four piece, which is be remarkable. Be remarkable means worthy of remark. It means that you have a, a product or a service that people talk about. There's no point having a me too product or service just like everyone else is because people won't remember who you are. They're not gonna buy from you if they don't know that. So it's actually about having a product or service which is remarkable. And it can be remarkable because it's, it's, it's the fastest. It can be remarkable because it's the best. It can be remarkable because it's payment by results. It can be remarkable because of the friendly service. But if you're the same as the competition, I can't think of a single reason why people should bother to buy from you. So the big question, the simple question for me is this, which is, why should people bother to buy from you when they can buy from the competition? That's it. I mean, that is, that is the question. And what I'm going to do is I've, I've now got all your mobile phone numbers. I've clicked them in. 
and I'm going to phone you up at four o'clock in the morning and I'm going to say, hey, why should I buy from you when I can buy from the competition? And if you can't give me a really clear, succinct answer in 10 seconds, then I'm going to put the phone down, I'm going to wait 10 minutes, and then I'm going to phone you again. And we're going to do it until you get it right. Because if you can't explain why people should buy from you, then I can tell you that your staff won't know why people should buy from you. And if your staff don't know why people should buy from you, then I can tell you that your customers don't know why they should be buying from you. So this, why should people bother to buy from you thing is absolutely a crucial question. Second question, so why should people bother to buy from you? Second question is, why can't you sell more stuff? Why can't you sell more stuff? And why can't you sell more stuff? The answer to that is really pretty straightforward. I think it's pretty straightforward, the answer to this question. Uh, really, there's a huge great elephant in the room for most of us in our businesses. And the elephant in the room is that our business is the same as everyone else's. You employ similar people with similar qualifications on similar pay rates using similar software and similar hardware to sell similar products to similar people at similar price points on similar websites at similar prices to these similar people in similar ways. And it, everything out there is so incredibly bland and beige and dull that the only thing that the customer can do is buy the cheapest because everything else looks the same. So they end up either buying the shiniest or they buy the cheapest, neither of which you want, which is why you need to be different. You need to stand out, you need to be remarkable. So the question is, how do you do that? Well, a couple of thought bubbles, really. First thing is that it's not about advertising, all that stuff going on over there, okay? Yeah, three quarters of, 76% of consumers do not believe that companies tell the truth in advertising, okay? Stats, facts, New York, three quarters of people do not believe that what they're told by companies is the truth. So when we go to all these companies and we see their pretty banners, we actually don't believe that they're the best and the greatest and the best, most fun. Because we know they've written that stuff themselves, just like we do it ourselves. What's interesting is nearly 80% of people trust the recommendations of other people. So if you're going to grow your business, the way you do that is you do it by word of mouth, you do it by delivering awesome service, you do it by getting people to talk about you, and you're finding ways and methods that people can talk about you. That way, you actually have something that's actually worthwhile, something that's actually going to happen to happen. And then you can actually start answering the question, why should people bother to buy from me when they can buy from the competition? And the other question, which is, what makes you different from the rest? And you need to be able to answer those questions. In essence, the, the, the four things I'm talking about today are not a four things piece, because I don't believe that these four things, if you go away and do it, will make the difference that makes the difference. These are the quick fixes. If you want quick fixes, just go back, put your prices up, screw your suppliers' feet to the ground, sack some people, and sort out your marketing. But actually, if you actually want to do it and you're actually serious about doing it, it's not about quick fix, it's about long-term fix. It's actually about stepping back and understanding what's actually going on in your business. And actually, I think, it's actually about you sitting down in a really quiet manner and asking yourself, what is, what is the truth? What is the truth about you and your business? Really, just how good? Just how good is your business? Really, just how badly do you want it? Really, yeah, do you believe all this bollocks which is talked here about, be passionate about my business, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm gonna, you know, if you really believe that stuff, then go for it. But the reality, you know, and, and you know, David here called it, is it's bloody hard work. So a few great ideas, bloody hard work. If you really believe it, have you got what it takes? Has your product got what it takes? Has the service got what it takes? Have you got the ability to become a managing director? So what is the truth about you? More importantly, what is the truth about your competition? Just be absolutely honest with yourself. How good is the competition? What is it that the competition is selling? Why are people buying from the competition when they could be buying from you? What is it that makes them go there and not go there? You need to be absolutely ruthless about 
what, how good the competition is and why people buy from the competition. And then finally, you need to be the third ruthlessness about truth, is the truth about your customer. And the truth about your customer is not something that comes out on some customer survey. What are their problems, hurts, needs, in, itches, wants, what, wants, scratches? What is it that they actually really, really want? More importantly, it's not just about can I flog them a product, it's about what is the solution in whatever terms that is that they actually require. Because actually what we're, what we're in the business of doing, we're actually in the business of making a difference. So unless you understand what makes a difference to your customers, then you're going to get nowhere in the long run. You, you can, you can, if you're an accountant, you can say, I can save you tax. If you're a digital agency, you can say, I can get you more hits on your website. But the customer is, doesn't just want those single things. They actually want a bigger, a bigger solution, a bigger offering than just this very precise solution. So you need to be thinking, what is the truth about myself and my business? What is the truth about the marketplace and my competitors? And what is the truth? about my customers and what their problems and hurts and itches are and how I can solve them. And if you've got a product and a service that can actually engage with your customers on an emotional level, so you can actually make a difference to them, then they buy into you, then they become brand advocates, then the word of mouth thing happens. So is this hippie shit? No, it's not. This stuff actually works. Evidence is there to support it. This is not about making firework businesses that you can sell for 10 million in a year's time. It's about growing a business, 3% and 5%, year on year, creating sustainable growth, something that can actually give you the business that you actually want to do. So, in conclusion, I'm going to stay around. If you want to ask questions, please do. If you want to buy books from me, please do. In conclusion, a couple of thoughts, really. The problem's not that we aim too high and fail. The problem is that we aim too low and succeed. We get conned into believing we can do all kinds of stuff. And it's, it's kind of like uh, dieting. We, we, we buy the next diet which we think is going to solve our problem. We go after the silver bullet. Oh, someone can double my profits in 10 days. I'm going to go for it. Give me my money. We know that in dieting is actually about, we know what to do with dieting. You've got to eat less and exercise more. Yeah? We know with businesses, you've got to find a way of blowing away clients and sell to them and sell more. It's exactly the same model, but you've got to understand how to do it. One of the problems we have is that is as business owners, we aren't accountable to anyone. We just do what we want and we change the rules whenever we want. So one of the you know, pieces of advice from me is go and get yourself someone who you are accountable to, a coach, a mentor, your accountant. I don't care who it is, but on a week by week basis, you tell them what you're going to do, and on a week by week basis, they come back to you and said, you said you were gonna do it, did you do it? You said you were gonna do it. The trouble is we are accountable to no one because we're entrepreneurs and we can change our minds when we feel like it. And that's no way of, of hitting a plan, that's no way of making it happen. So, what is the message? Message one is stop procrastinating. It's all about speed, it's all about doing stuff as quickly, as quickly, as fast as you can possibly do it. Two, it's about making, it's about making the tough decisions, okay? Uh, there's, I don't know who read this book who said that running a business is easy. It is actually about making tough decisions. It is actually about telling customers who you like you no longer want to work with them. It's actually about telling staff who don't work that you no longer want them to work with you. Running a business is, making, is about making tough decisions. It's painted very nicely on television, but the reality is it's about making tough decisions and it's about taking massive, massive action. Thirdly, it's about doing stuff not in a sequential basis. First, I'll put my prices up, then I'll reduce my costs, then I'll sort my underperformers, then I'll do my... It's not about doing it step by step in a nice, graceful manner. It's actually about doing stuff simultaneously. It's actually about doing it virtually all together so you can see what happens when you make this stuff happen. It's actually about taking massive action and doing it a lot. And finally, a question about DIY. Can you do it alone? I would argue 
DIY is the most dreadful way of trying to grow a business. If you want to know about DIY, come and look at the shelves in my garage and you'll understand why I don't believe big time in DIY. And finally, has anyone got a five pound note I can borrow? I need a five pound note. See whether you're listening. Anyone got a five pound note? Five pound note, I need a five pound note. Only five pound notes. Fantastic, right. Here we go. Let me just move this out of the way. The question for you, which you need to be left with, is now what? Now what the heck are you going to do as a result of today? What decisions are you going to make? Are you going to do it? But this is the problem. You gave me the five pound note? You. Alex, fantastic. This is what Alex does, okay? He... That's better. Put stuff out of the way. Five pound note. This is his business, it's a money machine. What he endlessly does is he puts a five pound note into his money machine, turns the handle, and out comes the five pound note. It is absolutely soul destroying. Alex needs to take action, yeah? So that when he takes his five pound note in, listen to my wonderful words, he says, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna buy a book, I'm gonna take those four things, I'm gonna get a custom, I'm gonna get myself a coat, I'm gonna get my, I'm gonna make it happen. He takes a five pound note, he puts the five pound note into his money machine, and still, he gets a five pound note out. Why? Because it's not just saying, I want to do it, I want to pay for someone to help me. It's actually about Alex actually taking the action himself, actually making the tough decision, because no one else can do it with him. Because then, when he does it, when he puts the five pound note in the money machine, whoops, everything's falling apart, out comes a 10 pound note. And of course, once he's got a £10 note out, he can put a £10 note in and out comes a £20 note. Alex is getting excited. And of course, now he's got a proper business, things start getting more efficient. So that when he puts a £20 note in, out comes a £50 note. So that, these are for sale, but no. So that's what we're about, really. Uh, Alex, thank you very much for the £5 note. I'll give you that back now. My name's Robert Craven. If you want to talk to me more, that would be fantastic. If you want copies of the Grow Your Service firm or Bright Marketing book, that's fantastic. You've been a lovely audience. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.